Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Stand for the singing of O Canada. Record of attendance, Jody, thank you, you've got that. Declarations of conflict of interest, anyone? Not yet. Approval of agenda, any additions or deletions? So I have 11A, I have fire department tender, pumper, rescue. I am taking off 8A, I'm gonna remove that for now. That was the only one I had thought of, and that is Councillor Dennis. Go ahead. I just want to add, it's just going to be a question on the Glebe Street Parkade. Okay. Glebe Street, you're going to be 11B. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. I want to, at, at uh, 11, 11C, is um, I give a little preamble now. I want to add, consider adding another member to our Waterfront Development Corporation uh, by the name of Derek Robertson. He was on our list for consideration and uh, ended up not being on the committee. So just for consideration under 11C, please. 11C, good. Councillor Dawes. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, 11D, uh, just a quick congratulation and acknowledgement, please. Thank you. Good, you're 11D, CAO, you're almost there. Thank, thank you, Worship, I have three items. Mm -hmm. And the good news we is that only have room for two. they're all deletions. Uh, I'd, oh, like, okay. I'd like to delete uh, item 7B, staff would like to have more time before we bring that forward for first reading. Construction noise. Right, construction 7B noise by law. I'd like to uh, take 8C off, as you can see the document wasn't ready for this evening, so okay, uh, yeah. we'll, yeah, we'll complete that, bring it forward. And I'd like to delete 8D. 8D response, okay. Good. Getting shorter all the time. 7B, 8C, 8D. Good. Councillor Dennis, your light's still on. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Councillor Langell. Thank you, Your Worship. I'd like to delete uh, item 8K because I matter how I understand that's now in the works that yep. we have a CFES parade, so we don't need that. Thank and uh, there are, uh, with Council's permission, there are three recommendations from yesterday's Communities in Bloom Committee okay. that you have before you that are a little, I apologize, what we had to meet yesterday. And there, I would like to have put under committee reports. So that usually, can I put that under 9BC? Yeah. Is that where that would go, like right after you do Heritage? Yes. Okay, so let's do that. 9BC, it's on the second page there, and we're gonna put communities in bloom. Good, anything else, anyone? Second. Moved and seconded, any discussion? Questions, Questions been called. All those in favor of the agenda with the, with the changes? Uh, I need someone from this side of the room. <laughs> uh, Councillor Mooney allow, only allowed to I once. <laughs> but, but thank you for filling in. <laughs> so, I thought it was pretty good, I have to say. Do you do that at golf? <laughs> okay, all those in favor, aye. Okay, so the agenda is good. Okay, approval of minutes. I have a, the regular meeting of town council, April 16th, 2015. 
Moved and seconded. Moved by Councillor Dennis. Seconded by Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Committee of the Whole, April 21st, 2015. So moved. Moved Councillor Mooney. Second, Councillor Dawes. Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Committee of the Whole, April 23rd, 2015. Twenty-third, Councillor Dawes, moved by Councillor Dawes. You want to second that? Councillor Dennis seconds it. Any discussion? Questions been called? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Committee of the whole, April 28th, 2015. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Mooney, second by Councillor Dawes. Any discussion? Questions. Questions been called? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. And Town Council, April 30th, 2015. Moved. moved by Deputy Mayor. Second. Second by Councillor Mooney. Second. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Dennis. Business arising 2015-16 budget for approval. CAO. Thank you, Worship. <coughs> Excuse me. So council as committee of the whole has met on several occasions since the first of the uh, calendar year to work on the operating budget, the capital budget, grants to organizations and so on. So uh, at the last committee of the whole meeting, uh, I believe we reached consensus on the, on the operating budget for the <coughs> town of Yarmouth. And so I have a fairly long um, uh, list of rates and so on that I can read off in the form of a motion. Obviously, I can't make the motion, but I'd be happy to read it if, if you wish. That's appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so the council, the motion would be, if somebody would make it, that council accept a budget with revenues in the amount of $17,248,600 and expenses of $17,246,000 sorry, $246,496 for an overall surplus of $2,104 for its general operations for the year ended March 31st, 2016, which provides for the following rates. Residential property rate, $1.71 per $100 of assessment. Commercial property rate, $4.39 per $100 of assessment. <coughs> Resource general rate of $1.71 per hundred of assessment and farmland rate of $2.16 per acre. Garbage collection and processing residential uh, would be $180 per dwelling unit up to a maximum of four dwelling units per building. And in excess of four dwelling units is deemed commercial and at the owner's expense. Retail and other commercial type operators are deemed commercial and at their own expense. We have pollution uh, control charges and these have uh, have increased. Uh, I said it's your oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, pollution control charges are the sewer rates that that we pay within the town. So for five inch, five eight inch water services, the quarterly rate will be thirty one dollars sixty six cents per quarter. For three quarter inch uh, water services, the, the sewer charge will be $47.50 per quarter. For one inch, it will be $79.16 per quarter. For one and a half inch, $158.32 per quarter. For two inch lines, $2.53, $253.31 per quarter. For three inch, it will be $506.61 per quarter. For four inch, $791.58 per quarter. Six inch will be $1,583.17 per quarter. And for eight inch, $2,849.70 per quarter. Those are the base rates. The effluent rate, which is based on the consumption of water, will be three dollars twelve point one cents per thousand imperial gallons. The interest rate 
at, uh, that will be charged by the town of Yarmouth will be 14% per annum and will be charged on delinquent accounts. Depreciation. Council approves a transfer to the capital fund an amount equal to the depreciation expense included in the 2015-16 budget of $1,825,479. Now that is a new clause this year and it relates to the fact that we fund our depreciation and because of the, the way the accounting is done, we need this motion to transfer that into the capital fund. And finally, that the CAO will implement the, the inherent recommendations, administer and control the operating budget and report to council as appropriate. Thank you, Worship. Um, I'd, I'd like to make that motion, please, to get it on the books. Then I had a quick question for the CAO, if there's a second. Second. Thank you, Worship. Um, <coughs> Mr. Gushu, just uh, for those who are watching, what would the impact be to the average residential homeowner and commercial homeowner? Where are we with that rates? Are we looking up, down? I know the answer, but I think for the benefit of those watching, because there's a lot of numbers there. Sure, absolutely. So uh, there will be no uh, increase uh, we ex we expect um, on average to to residential or commercial. The only changes, sorry, are, are in the tax rate, we've seen the tax rates for residential and commercial come down. They have come down in amount equal to what we expect the increase in the sewer charges to be. And so what we're trying to do is make the sewer operation self-sustaining based on the fees that we charge. A few years ago, we were subsidizing the sewer operation to the tune of a million dollars out of general tax revenue and still charging a, a sewer rate, which probably gave people the understanding that they were paying for sewer fully through that rate. In a couple years' time, that will actually be the case, that our sewer charges will fully cover the cost of operations, and that taxation will be backed out of our rates, and our rates have been coming down the last couple of years. The one place where, where uh, the costs are increasing is on the solid waste or on the what we call um, find it here, the garbage collection and processing. That is $180 per dwelling unit this year, and I believe that's $25 more than it was in the past. And that is simply on the same principle as that the, char the charge that we put uh, out there per dwelling unit is intended to cover the full cost of providing that service. And over the last couple of years, that has slipped a little bit, so we're making the adjustment this year. And so for $25, or about 50 cents a week, we're now going to be able to fully cover the cost of those services. And thank, thank you, Your Worship. Maybe we could get the CAO to explain funding depreciation, please. So, um, in, in I think I, what I hope are the simplest terms, um, our depreciation is, is a calculation we do of our, what we call our tangible capital assets. And that is our buildings and our, our vehicles, equipment, our plants, and so on. They're our tangible capital assets. So every year, a building such as this, uh, we use up a year of its, of its useful life. A building like this, we might have thought, would last maybe 40 years, useful life. So every year, we expense 1 40th of the original cost of constructing this building. We do that for all of our tangible capital assets and it adds up to a little over $1.8 million per year. So what we do when we say we fund our, our depreciation is that in our, in our general tax rates, we collect enough money to replace that $1.8 million every year. So as we're using up the useful life of our tangible capital assets, our taxpayers are paying for it and we are reinvesting it back into our, into our capital assets. So when we do things like the Hawthorne Street uh, uh, rebuild, or we did Pleasant Street a few years ago, we did uh, Green Street. When we do projects like that, the reason we can afford to do them is because we're, we, are, we are paying our way on our, on our infrastructure through our depreciation, and that gives us money to put back into the infrastructure. We are the only municipality in Nova Scotia that does that. We've been doing it for 10 years, and I'm not sure that there's another municipality in Canada that can say that. That's right. That's right. Okay. Questions been called. All those in favor of the budget as described by the CAO? Aye. Uh, contrary? Unanimously? 
Certainly. I'd like, to, I, I'd like to just give a public shout out to our Director of Finance, Jerry Varon. Uh, Jerry did 98% you know, of the work on the budget and through all those meetings with Committee of the Whole, he did, he did the work. And uh, so it's, it's, it's um, I, I feel a little um, <laughs> uh, inappropriate really presenting, presenting the budget that he did so much work on. So, uh, so shout out to Jerry for, for great work on that. Yeah. Good. Okay, council meetings bylaw second reading. No, that's okay. You just dealt with $17 million. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Your Worship. So the council meetings bylaw second reading. Uh, what would be appropriate at this time would be if there was anybody in the, in the audience who wished to speak because this, is, this essentially is a public hearing mm -hmm. part and then you would make either a motion to approve second reading or to send it back for revision or to defer it to another time. Okay. But in, in essence, what we've done here with the uh, council meetings bylaws, we had a, uh, a council agenda policy as a separate document and we had the council meetings bylaw. And so the bylaw and policy review committee went through the two documents and merged them into one and uh, it passed first reading at the last council meeting. So it would be appropriate if anybody wished to speak from the public to do so now and then consider a motion for second reading. Good. Does, does anyone from the public wish to speak first? Okay, I'll provide you another opportunity. Deputy Mayor? Uh, Your Worship, I just have a question. Uh, in reading this over, I see the words, or the two words, town clerk. Mm. And I wondered, uh, I'm not sure where they are, Jeff, in, in, in the nine pages here in front of us, but uh, is town clerk still appropriate? Thank you. Sorry, CAO? The, uh, the short answer is yes, it's still appropriate. Um, there are, under the Municipal Government Act, uh, there, are, there are roles and responsibilities for the town clerk and the town treasurer and the CAO, and I wear all three of those titles and, and hats uh, at different times, I guess, under the, under the Act. So it is still an appropriate uh, term. I'm going to ask the second time, would, it, would anyone like to speak from the public? Does anyone like to speak? No? Okay, so I am looking for a motion to approve second reading. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? <clears throat> motion carried. Building bylaw, second reading. Same thing. Go ahead, CAO. Uh, th this uh, actually has come from staff. The, the rewrite on this came from staff. We have a new building inspector in the last year, and uh, she reviewed the bylaws, suggested basically some housekeeping changes to it. I, I don't believe there's anything more substantive than that. And so this is, again, second reading. So if anybody from the public wish, wish to speak to it, uh, this would be the appropriate time. And then a motion uh, either to approve, uh, refer, or, or to defer from council. Good. Would anyone from the public like to speak to the building bylaw? Anyone from the public? Third time. Anyone out there want to speak to this one? No? Councillor Dawes, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to make the motion to, uh, to accept and approve the building bylaw as, uh, as presented by our by staff. Okay. Thank you. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Fire prevention bylaw second reading. Go ahead, CAO. Thank you, Worship. So uh, the fire prevention bylaw amendments were prepared by the uh, fire inspector in consultation with the chief and addresses, uh, first of all, the color of private hydrants. And secondly, uh, makes explicit the authority of the fire inspector on rental units. And under that uh, authority, if passed, the fire safety inspection policy, which isn't on the agenda tonight but will come forward, and you've seen it before, uh, would allow for the inspection of, uh, of, um, of rental units. And our intention, as we've talked about before, is to, to inspect more units, more rental units, and to bring down the 
a minimum number of rental units before they become eligible for, for inspection over time. Good. Anyone in the public want to speak to this right now? Go ahead, Councilor. Thank you, Worship. Uh, if the Chief doesn't mind, if he could come up and explain the different color of fire hydrogens uh, versus the ones that we have in the town of Yarmouth, different color ones, if uh, you could give us that information. We appreciate it. Yeah, there's, um, there's private fire hydrants and then there's uh, municipal fire hydrants. Municipal fire hydrants go by NFPA. Anything that doesn't, uh, isn't covered in the town has to be painted red in our private fire hydrants. And we don't, uh, we don't um, maintenance them. Uh, it doesn't fall under me, it falls under public works, but we don't maintenance them unless they paid to be maintenance. For our town, you've got uh, four main hydrants. You've got a red one, which is below 500. Then you've got from 500 to 1,000, which is orange. From 1,000 to 1,500 is green, and over 1,500 is blue. So basically, that's it. Do we have uh, any red ones, private ones? We have, I don't know the exact numbers, uh, but we do have red ones uh, here and there, right? And also, you could have a, a higher colored one or a higher class one, if you will, uh, that may have an old main to it, and if the main breaks, obviously, it's not going to be the same color as it was before and things. Yeah. Those would be higher volume are usually in the, in the more consumption. Like if you have a business area or an industrial area, you'll have higher volume. That's normally the way the uh, system's put together, right? Yeah, go, go ahead, CAO. Yeah, I just, I, I just want to make clear a differentiation there that I'm not sure was clear. So a privately owned hydrant, and there are some on commercial properties, what this bylaw is saying is they must be painted red entirely. The hydrant colors that, that the chief went through, those are the caps that you see on the town owned hydrants, and they, they, the color indicates the availability of water, how much water is available, which I think is helpful to the fire department when they're, when they're setting up to fight a fire. They, they can tell by looking, you know, is this a, is this a hydrant that's going to give us a high supply of water versus maybe not so high. And, and your comment uh, about the, the red capped ones, I think those tend to be in, in older, older, smaller mains and uh, parts of town that, that don't have the, the newer, bigger infrastructure. Thank you, Chief. Okay, I'll, I'll ask again if anyone in the public wishes to speak to this. Third and final time, anyone like to speak to this? Okay, I am looking for a motion either way. So, no. Nope. <laughs> Whatever the I need to know what the motion is. If it's a, if it's a motion to approve, motion to approve, then okay, as it is. Councillor Dawes, did you want to second that? I will second. Okay, moved and seconded. Discussion. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary. <clears throat> motion carried. You realize any time anyone clears their throat, I'm thinking there's a light on that I'm missing. <laughs> so, no, it's okay. <laughs> Okay, minimum housing standards by law, second reading. Go ahead, CAO. Thank you, Worship. So the minimum housing standards by law had not been reviewed in its entirety for some time. Uh, the town staff, the building inspector, and the director of planning development uh, reviewed the bylaw and have suggested some, some housekeeping amendments here. And I think the most substantive change is I believe that we, we no longer under this bylaw proposal would be dealing with vermin, okay, that we would no longer be responsible for vermin and it's questionable whether we have that authority under the Municipal Government Act. One of the reasons that... Um, what do you mean responsible? Well, minimum housing standards, uh, what, where this comes in is if we get a complaint, and usually these are complaint driven, uh, somebody says, I, I have... Uh, uh, some sort of, of a vermin okay. in, in my in my place. What this says is is that uh, that you can't provide housing that doesn't meet a certain standard on these particular areas. So um, as I said, it's questionable whether we have the authority to to impose a bylaw with regard to vermin under the Municipal Government Act. Okay. And and so what they looked at is is where is our clear authority under the Act? Uh, this has been reviewed by Mr. Barrow as well, I should say. And what they're presenting back to you is, is what I think they believe is a, is a reasonable bylaw, an enforceable bylaw, 
and one that they, they clearly have the authority to, to deal with. So again, the second reading, so it would be a chance for mm -hmm. uh, the public. Would someone in the public like to speak to this? This is the minimum housing bylaw. Anyone out there want to speak to this? Third time? Would anyone in the public like to speak to this one? No? Okay, hearing none, I am looking for a motion. Councillor Dawes? Thank you, Your Worship. I would gladly uh, uh, make the motion to uh, accept the minimum housing standards bylaw as presented by staff here on the agenda. So moved. It was, it, it's well done. Seconded by Councillor Dennis. Councillor Lancho? Yeah, I was just considering this um, on the minimum housing bylaw, and I'm just wondering a question for the CAO. The bylaw as it is coming in, what effect will it have, generally speaking, on properties that are now existing? Is there any grandfathering built into this, or will this be coming in? So there's none? Good. Second question is, and this is my old bugaboo, we have passed regulations and bylaws in the past that are still sitting on a minister's desk. Have we got any indication when those bylaws and those regulations are going to be pulled off the minister's desk and maybe signed? Because some of them have been on the minister's desk for about four or five years now. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that I think it would be nice before our mandate runs out that we get at least one of these or two of these signed. Well, uh, let me say this. The, there was another conversation last week so that uh, we should see something hopefully very soon very soon the loitering one in particular I, I said we'd love to have that we'd love to have it before yeah. the Taurus land and that's in a couple of weeks so it should be coming soon oh, and CAO. yeah no I can tell you in the administration level that we had a uh, contact um, from the department uh, this week asking if we were still interested in having these regulations, uh, <clears throat> these bylaws registered under the regulations, and we actually said yes, all except for the helmet bylaw, which we've repealed, so uh, that, <laughs> all, all except for one, so um, the good news is that there's been a contact, at least it's on somebody's radar there, uh, and hopefully, you know, as you say, before the term is done, we'll, uh, we'll get that bit done. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a supplementary. Um, so do these help me with process here? So the minister can sign up, but do they have to go to the legislature? Or are we going to be incumbent on the fall meeting session of the legislature? Uh, Mayor indicated that I'm wondering, or can the minister just sign them off as regulations? Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that, Ken. Escort, Councillor Langell. I, uh, I don't know the answer. Um, I assume because it's regulation, it doesn't have to go back, but um, I can look in that if you like. Thank you. Okay. Good. <clears throat> okay. So anything further? Did we pass the minimum housing? No. Okay. So questions being called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Corporate identity and branding policy. CAO? Your Worship, this uh, was brought forward to Committee of the Whole, uh, I believe, a uh, month and a half, two months ago, and uh, we missed it on last month's Council agenda for approval, so it's yeah. just a bit of housekeeping bringing that forward at this point. But we have, uh, I can say we have, in fact, been in the process of implementing it, and uh, so we, we hope you'll approve it. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. We are down to new business and we're at ComFit support. CAO. Thank you. Sorry, I don't have documentation for you on this, but it is a, uh, the ComFit program is the, what is the short, short form of community feed-in tariff. So what that is, is the Department of Energy set up a few years ago a program whereby uh, municipalities, um, educational institutions, public sector entities could in fact undertake green energy pro projects and sell the energy they create to Nova Scotia Power at a very favorable rate. Uh, that program uh, just ended recently and we do have an active appro approval under that program for two wind turbines which were in the process of, uh, of going through the uh, 
the installation process. So there's public participation and so on. So we're doing that. Um, but the program has come to an end. It was, I think, fairly successful. And uh, the province, uh, we we're told, is considering whether another program is, is worthwhile. And from, from my perspective and, and uh, the Green Energy Committee's perspective, a, a second round to the CONFIT program would be desirable because it gives, it gives that public sector an opportunity to set up demonstration projects or, or set leadership in place in terms of some green energy projects. Just as an example, and we've talked about wind turbines in Yarmouth County. In, uh, in Digby County, I know there's a, a methane generator that, uh, that was purchased by a municipality. It's, uh, it's set up in a cooperate, cooperative arrangement with the mink industry, so basically using mink waste to generate methane to burn and create electricity. So there are all kinds of, uh, of projects like that across the province that would not happen. We would not get into that business if it weren't for the ComFit program. And I think the ComFit program uh, is, is an appropriate way for government to to work with quasi-government agencies to set leadership on green energy across the province. Uh, there is also always uh, programs for the, for the private sector to, to do projects such as wind farms or solar projects or what have you. But in the absence of a ComFit program, uh, it probably is not the business that municipalities and universities and so on should be into. But with that program, it is a unique opportunity. And, and we've seen like in the municipality of Claire at the university, there are wind turbines there that are, uh, that are generating electricity and, uh, you know, I guess setting an example in the community. So what I would ask, I, of course I'd answer any questions I can, but asking for a general letter of support to the, to the Minister of Energy to, to do a phase two on the ComFit program. I just had a question to the CAO and probably would definitely move the motion, but I um, was a little bit concerned uh, last week when I read a well-known, excellent publication, The Vanguard, and uh, there was an article from a fellow schoolmate of mine, Wade Nickerson. He wrote a, quite a, a lengthy letter, and I have a high respect for Wade, and uh, he not normally doesn't author letters. And there were some interesting statements in that. Um, is there a possibility that we could get, I don't want to get into a debate in the media on it, of course, I don't think it's our place to respond, but there seems to be some conflicting numbers uh, that Mr. Nickerson brought up. Is there a way that uh, maybe we could find out if who's telling who what? Because uh, the numbers that Mr. Nickerson raises on the amount of output, uh, the numbers he was raising on noise and factors like that are a little bit different than what we've, what he's suggesting is maybe not what we've been told. I'm very supportive of the project, don't get me wrong but I wanted to make sure the information was right. And I, I, again, have high respect for Mr. Nickerson, and he normally does not write, you know, publications. And uh, when he does write, he, he I takes great pride in accuracy, and I'm, I'm kind of curious as to a response on that. So can we, can we just bring that to the, to the committee? And, yeah. So I, I haven't, I confess I haven't met, read Mr. Nickerson's letter but I will, and uh, I'll get some information from, from our consultant uh, who is working with the turbine manufacturer and is very experienced in the industry, and I'll ask him to, re to review it and provide a response to okay. council so that, so that you have you know, that, I get what I would say is that perspective, unless there's a different uh, person you'd like me to go to to seek clarification. Just to help me out too on this one. So going into phase two means what? So the, the province uh, Department of Energy approved a rate and I believe it was about like 49 cents per kilowatt hour uh, to buy energy from ComFit com fit programs. And I believe if you buy electricity as a consumer from Nova Scotia Power, I think you pay something like 19 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's obviously a, uh, a very beneficial rate that's paid. And I think that's with, with a purpose, and that is to try and create those examples in the public sector across the province. So the program was open for, for a limited number of years and for applications, and just recently it, it closed. So they're not receiving any further applications. So what I'm asking uh, is, is that we, we ask the Minister of Energy to consider 
a phase two, which would create maybe in a year or so another opportunity for new projects to come forward to receive maybe a new rate, maybe not that rate, but a rate that is more beneficial than say the 19 cents or whatever a, a private sector uh, developer would do. That's a decision the Minister of Energy, I would expect, would make on the balance of, of is it needed, what would be the benefits of, of more community-based, not-for-profit, you know, public sector projects? Would it create more awareness or acceptance? Maybe that's not needed like it was five years ago. But if it is needed, it's certainly a great opportunity for the public sector to get involved and, and we will have net revenues from, from our project and we could do more like it if there was another conflict. Your Worship, I would like to make that motion that we, um, that the Town of Yarmouth supports uh, the recommendation of staff that we write to the Minister of Energy requesting, suggesting a phase two of the Comfit project. And, and I have a secondary question if somebody seconds to get it on the floor. Um, the other question I had, and I apologize to the CAO, and I was kind of hoping it would be part of the report. I, I did not attend the two public meetings. Unfortunately, I was out of town both, um, both times on justice business. Um, how did the public uh, meetings go? I'm curious if anybody went because I, I haven't seen much on that. Yeah, I, I attended the afternoon session um, and uh, it, was, uh, it was actually pretty good. There were questions asked and answers given. There was no presentation as such. There were poster boards and information there and, and so um, it didn't go, didn't go too badly. I understand uh, secondhand that the evening session drew more people that were, that were not in favor of, of wind energy projects, I think, generally, mm -hmm. and maybe specifically that one for various reasons. Um, and I believe there was a, th a third session which was done um, for people who had specifically, for whatever reason, weren't able to attend either of those. And uh, again, I don't, I don't know that that went especially well. I think, and, and this is one of the reasons why maybe a CONFIT program is still needed, is that I think there's a, there's a lot of misinformation. And let, me put, let, me, let me back up from that word a little bit and say a lot of concern about wind energy and different perspectives about, about the pros and cons. And what a CONFIT program does for communities is allows where there is acceptance and where there is a will to get some community benefit and to put a demonstration project out there. So where this one goes from here, um, you know, that, that is yet to be determined. Um, and I guess I, I could end by saying that if you would like to have a, a brief uh, from uh, Neil McKenzie, Neil uh, uh, chaired those community sessions. Uh, I'm sure he'd be willing to provide you with a brief summary of, of what went on there. Probably do that at Committee of the Whole, Pastor. Airport and <laughs> right, it came from that side first time. Airport intermunicipal. Oh, did we vote on that? No, we didn't. Okay, question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Airport intermunicipal agreement for approval. CAO. Councillor, did you have your lights on? Mine, but I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait, uh, Your Worship, to see what Jeff has to say. And uh, I, I sit on the airport commission, so I just want to see what he has to say. And uh, I'll ask the question, and then he, he can throw it in his answer. Uh, I read some of the report. I didn't read it all. Are you comfortable with the report as it's as it's presented? Do you have any uh, concerns? Is there anything that with this council or any of the other councils, we can only speak for ourselves, should be worried about? It is up, I think, we're in, uh, this month or September, or is it already up now? It's already gone now. Okay, so I'll, I'll just wait to see what you have to say. Great. Okay, CAO. So we had, an, uh, we have an intermunicipal corporation based on an intermunicipal agreement that expired March 31st. And we, we agreed uh, to renegotiate, to create a new agreement. It was clear, uh, although there were, there were concerns about the airport and the funding that goes into it, uh, it was agreed that we would, we would work towards an agreement to continue the partnership. So uh, the three municipalities of Yarmouth County, uh, there, is, there is a, an agreement there, and 
Uh, some will recall that we had a meeting in Hebron to work out some of the last details that we felt uh, as CAOs needed, needed uh, a conversation between the elected officials of the, of the three units to arrive at ultimately what, what the right percentages for funding and so on were within the agreement. Uh, that was a great meeting, I thought. I thought there was a lot of sharing of, of, um, of um, perspectives. Not everyone necessarily agreed on everything, but you know what? When we can get together with our municipal neighbors and we can laugh and we can respect one another and we can work on an issue that we, we don't agree on and ultimately reach a, reach a consensus, I think that's, that's a sign of a, a very healthy intermunicipal relationship. So the new agreement is a four-year agreement and uh, it is so for, with, with intent. Uh, four years brings us to the same point in the next council's mandate <coughs> to make a decision about the future. It is not a 10-year agreement uh, and that is, that is intentional because we, we understand that the, we understand that the, the airport uh, is, is almost at a crossroads and we, it, is a, it is a huge asset to our community, to our region, to the province but it is underutilized, it is, and it is misunderstood in some regards. It is viewed as, as an economic asset, but it is a so social and cultural asset. Social in the sense that the life flights, the 20 some life flights every year that come in and use that airport have a value that you can't put a number on. When you think about the lives that may be saved in our community, we don't know how many would be saved without it, but do we want to take the chance that without the life flight fixed wing aircraft being able to land here that, that somebody that we know wouldn't make it because that airport wasn't open. It is also important to supporting our, our largest industry which is the fishing industry with the, the search and rescue and so on that, that is able to access the, the, uh, the resources of fueling, landing, whatever at the airport. So it, it's an important asset but the infrastructure is not getting any younger and we cannot afford on our own to maintain that infrastructure. And so with the four-year agreement, it is understood that we have to find an appropriate partnership with other levels of government to reinvest in the infrastructure at that airport or it will not continue to exist for the long term. And that would be a shame for, for the community and for the province. So that is, that is a, a task and I can't, I can't say strongly enough how important and how, how important that, that aspect of it is. So a four-year agreement the percentages have changed a little since the last one, but not a lot. And we have put a cap on the funding, which is also a message to the, to the airport that there is not a, uh, it's not unlimited. We have uh, so much money that we can invest in this. And so we're, we're, we have to live within our means. And that investment is not enough to replace infrastructure. So yes, to answer your question in short, <coughs> I think it's a, a good agreement, and I think it's an appropriate agreement at this time. Go ahead. Yeah, and and uh, listening to that, I move that we uh, enter into the agreement, accept the uh, terms of the agreement as presented tonight by the CEO, and uh, that's presented to us. Moved and seconded, Councillor Dawes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. seconded. <laughs> okay. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? Questions. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Request for a decision ferry terminal kiosk. Your Worship. <coughs> Sorry, Councillor. I ahead. think I think we should uh, make a motion. I'll make a motion. We send this to the Yarmouth Area Industrial Commission since we are all partners. I um, must make a uni unilateral decision on uh, putting something on the ferry terminal property with two other partners I don't think that's a good precedent nope. and they have a, we have a meeting on Tuesday night I believe it is very soon yes is that appropriate CAO I believe I think it is mm -hmm. yeah, I think that would be uh, that would be appropriate and considerate and uh, you know we can we can talk about it there and I think that's that's probably perfectly appropriate good Okay, Councillor Dawes. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I agree. I agree with my, my fellow councillors, and at the same time, perhaps um, uh, the the wording mm -hmm. on the uh, uh, ferry terminal kiosk operational requirements that was submitted at uh, the very first line. It does, does state kiosk operation kiosk operational for the 2015 Novastar sailing season with no rental fee yet. 
continually they identify themselves as the renter. So perhaps, um, uh, perhaps Councillor Mooney would like to add that to his motion, that that be looked at before, that be rectified or, or looked at before it goes. Go ahead. I think we can deal with that. Uh, industrial Commission. I'm sorry, I, I, think, I think we can deal with that at the Industrial Commission, I think. Uh, okay. That's There's fine. A, You're going to be there, yeah. too? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. I think uh, yeah. myself, Councillor McIsaac, Deputy there. Mayor, the Mayor are on there, so we'll, yeah. we'll bring those bring concerns to. Yeah, I am, we'll, too. Don't forget. Yeah. Thank yourself you. will bring those concerns <laughs> to the uh, Industrial Commission. Good. Thank you. Yes. Thank and just, you. Uh, just further to what Councillor Dawes commented, there are some items in that that uh, may spark some interest at the, I'm not on that Industrial Commission. Um, but things, for example, painting it in town brand colors, things like that, uh, that's something, I mean, that assumes an identity with us, whereas we do have two other partners, so uh, I think some caution may be there as well. Questions? Yep. Questions. Okay. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Request to Council Regalco Traffic Engineering Report. <coughs> Thank you, Worship. So this is a response to some questions that uh, I think came up at a committee the whole meeting about the recommendations of the uh, GALCO study and uh, were specifically pointed out. So uh, the memo just sort of in point form uh, tries to address how those each, each of those recommendations was addressed. Uh, I can go through it or if there are any questions, I can uh, try and answer the questions. Questions? Did you ever? Go ahead. Well, I read the. Of course, this has been. We've discussed this already. I believe at committee of the whole. Um, and uh, again, uh, there was quite a bit of interest as a result of what's happening there. Um, in conversation with various truckers recently, the horse fountain itself is really not an issue um, in Milton. Uh, because it actually uh, can stay pretty well where it is and probably should stay because it's not a, an impediment to the trucks moving. The issue seems to be the median. And uh, this mystery median that appeared, and I use the word mystery because I can't find anything in the study where it says that we should build a median. However, the only thing I did notice was on page nine, and I did send council an email on it dated April 14th, uh, and a quote from page nine, the new median on Vancouver Street offers more protection to the horse monument than previously existed. And this is the part that really concerned me. And the consultant is saying, however, its presence in a busy intersection can never be considered beneficial to either vehicular pedestrian movements or traffic safety. And that, that really stuck out with me. And, um, I don't know, I, I'd like to see us take that median out of there because to be perfectly honest uh, and talking to some of the truckers, that's the main problem they're having is getting around there to move that median out. We're having and maybe other, I know at least a couple of people around this table have echoed my comments. I'm seeing people going up the wrong way to beat the median and uh, I'm wondering if, and I, and I, I just, we, I didn't get an answer the time I brought it up with uh, Mr. Ernst, our traffic authority, that why was it put there? And in talking to residents in the Milton area, none of them really want it. Communities in Bloom, our committee see it as a garbage collector because every bit of litter that possibly blows through Milton ends up in that, in that median. Um, and it's, it's an issue. So I'm wondering if the CIO would comment on that. I, I, is it possible that we can take that puppy out of there? Did you want to answer that? Or no, no. Yeah. Keep your light on, though. Okay. okay. Go ahead, CAO. Yep. The median was introduced uh, between the two studies, uh, and it was not to protect the horse. <clears throat> it was to, to help to regulate the flow of traffic through that awkward intersection. Uh, and it was to, to prevent uh, people coming through the intersection and taking a left onto Water Street, or people coming up Water Street and taking a left up Forest. Those were the two, uh, and sorry, the third movement was coming down uh, Vancouver Street, thank you, and taking a left into the Irving. So those three maneuvers 
very close to the intersection, uh, creating what we call the five corners, uh, were, were undesirable. Up until the t point that the median was there, there were signs that told people not to make those moves. And of course, <coughs> excuse me, the signs had no, no serious impact on, on people's habits that had generated over, over many years. Um, and so between the, the previous traffic authority and Mr. Ernst, who was then the traffic authority and the town engineer, a decision was made to, to introduce that bit of infrastructure to solve those, those three movements that created problems in the intersection. It, it itself probably does create um, a, an irritation to people who are used to making those three maneuvers and can no longer make them. I think we heard that uh, ever since it was introduced that some people who used to go up Water Street and take the, take the left up Vancouver uh, missed that. Um, however, from the traffic control side, I think the traffic authority would say, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, but the, the slight irritation and slight inconvenience that that causes is outweighed by the, by the functioning of the intersection as a result of, of the presence of the median. Now, does it collect garbage? Yeah, sometimes it collects garbage. Uh, does it create a problem or, or an issue for trucks? <coughs> I guess I've watched a truck uh, ride its wheels up on the curb there, and uh, to the degree that that's a problem, I guess it creates a problem. Um, but I, I guess to your question, can it be removed? As the councillor uh, uh, to, to your left indicated, anything can, anything can be done. Um, the, the question is, is what, what are the cost benefits of, of doing that? And it was not a decision that was taken lightly. It didn't come from, from Galco. Uh, and it is not a decision that hasn't been without criticism from day one. But uh, from a traffic management perspective, uh, given the configuration of that intersection, it's, it's, I think Dave still believes that, that it is the best thing for overall. Thank you, Councillor Dawes. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the main issue, the main issue, as Councillor Councillor Dennis Dennis will will uh, will attest, uh, that the truck drivers have when they drive along Water Street is making that right-hand turn uh, from Water Street onto Main via Vancouver. That is where they're having the most difficulty. And I think there we would, uh, at least for this year, or, or uh, at least for this year and next year, because this year there's no money for that, for anything uh, 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 next year, because our budget has already been, been allocated. But uh, if we could look into what it would cost, what all would be involved, to just give those truck drivers an extra 10 feet into the green space there by Marcos, right in the corner, that would alleviate a lot of their problems and, and, and some of ours. And uh, if we could, I don't know, do you need a motion to, to refer that to the next, next year's capital budget to see where that fits, how much it would cost? If you want it, I will make it. Um, it's all, uh, as, you said, as you said before, it is, uh, it's all a question of cost, affordability. And if we've got lots of money, then we can do all our, all our we could do everything all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So is the question to, what would the motion be? To, to direct staff to, direct to look staff? into it or to refer it to budget? We've got to look at it first. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Obviously, our, like I said, your capital budget is set this year. So yes. if you'd like staff to, to look at options, you know, reasonably inexpensive options to reconfigure to deal with that if that's the issue, if it's the right turn for trucks from water to, to Main Street uh, on Vancouver. We can task Mr. Ernst and his and his people with coming up with options and maybe it's ten feet, maybe it's maybe it's less uh, from that green space to create the the more smooth uh, movement for trucks. Did you just dictate the entire motion? To, to direct staff <laughs> to look Sorry. into the options at the look. corners intersection for trucks to turn right. Turn right from water onto, yes. uh, onto Vancouver. That makes it very clear what the task is and yes. uh, 
you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh -huh. And referring it to next year's capital budget, that could wait after, or or would you like that see, added? Until we see what it is. Until then. Okay. Thank you. So there's your motion. Can I have a second? Someone would <laughs> second it. Did you second it? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Did you? Yeah, I want to. Yeah. So yeah. You want yeah. To right. To this? Well, there, there there is a problem there. There's no secret. Anybody that wants to take a left-hand turn then take a right-hand turn, another left on Main Street to go up towards Heaven and that, if you hit the traffic right, and I've hit it right all the time, you, you can't, you, you're halfway, you come out, you're blocking traffic from coming down Vancouver Street to go on to Main Street or even Water Street. And that's happened a lot of times, not only to me, but probably a lot of other people. Once you, if there's two, if there's two vehicles there waiting to take a left-hand turn, you block the whole thing off. You ain't going nowhere, and that medium plays havoc to that, uh, and and it's it's going to continue to do that. I uh, it, it's it states very clearly in that report. I guess if you want to believe the report, you believe it. If you don't want to believe it, and you got the, the the traffic authority's got another answer for it because he likes his answer, that's fine, that's fine. But uh, I won't be uh, supporting the motion. I think that uh, what should be is take the medium either partially out, partially out, put, put the signs back up where they were before, put it at the one, one end by the horse there, that you can't turn to go on to a cross, you can't go cross traffic, or you can't make a, uh, a left-hand turn, a right-hand turn up, in, uh, up on Bank Vancouver Street, right or left, whatever it is. I mean, it's pretty simple. You ain't going to take it all out, but you should take some of it out to allow the trucks to be able to turn. If you're looking at taking some of that sidewalk and moving the sidewalk over, I think you better, you better do, do both options. You better, I would think you look at both options. Take some of it out so it, the trucks can make that curve and other traffic, it won't appease the uh, flow of traffic coming off Water Street to go on to go up the Hebron Way because you can only, get two, only fit two cars there, period. You can't put any more. So I say that there is a problem, and uh, I'll go with what the report says, that uh, you know, when they made the report, there wasn't a medium there, so. Councillor Landro. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, hearing what uh, Councillor McIsaac was commenting, there's a couple of comments there. Number, number one, I think, as the CAO pointed out, the median uh, appeared between the two studies. There were two studies involved, and that's where the median kind of crept in between the two. Um, the one I'm quoting from was the last study. That was the one after the median was introduced. And that, that bothered me because this is from a traffic consulting company that we hired to look at it. Now, I don't know whether we have to bring Galco back or not. It may, I don't even know if they even exist. Um, the other problem we have, and I do hope, I do know that our traffic authority, I, do, I can pretty well read, has no interest in taking the median out. Um, that was pretty apparent in discussions here. Um, so it was going to be a, uh, my question is even if it is a traffic authority function to decide medians or not, but that's another issue. Um, however, I do feel that we have to look at the median, and I do hope that in this motion that Councillor Dawes so excellently crafted, uh, uh, <laughs> you liked that, did you? <laughs> it was good. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Councillor Daw has crafted. Um, I, I will hope that the intent is that the median will become a factor in that review, that we're not only going to be looking at that little corner, that we are going to seriously look at the median. The other concern that I have, too, is recently uh, we've added a hunk of concrete on the end of the bridge. So as you turn right onto Vancouver, from Vancouver onto water, we have a, a hunk of concrete stuck there. And I'm not sure the reason for the hunk, and I did bring that up to the uh, traffic authority at a recent meeting here, and he couldn't answer me or didn't answer me on it. Um, the issue there is, is just recently today, I was coming back from the hospital and uh, coming down, and to take a turn on Water Street, it is blocking the view. If you're a low car, you really do not have a good view plane onto Vancouver Street. And I'll be honest, I just ran into a car because I tended to take the turn a little wide and there's like a car there that, whoa, where did that come from? And that's that block of 
So I mean, on one hand, we're like mega concerned and safe and really worried about that median got to stay for traffic, yet we put a big hunk of concrete on the end of a bridge to take away the view plane. So I'm kind of confused. Yeah, we're in the minority there. Yeah, of course, you're, if you're short, if you're short in a car, you got an issue. Yeah, I don't hear you. So I, I hope that hunk of concrete will be part of that study too, that we will look at the hunk and we'll look at the median as part of that. And, uh, and I, I welcome that report coming in. Councillor Dennis. Um, I really want to see this study done <clears throat> because I don't want to see us rushing into making a decision on this because at one time I'm sure council went through the same thing before they put the medium in and now we're discussing taking it out and I don't want to see us wasting tax dollars on putting it in, taking it out and then having a problem again. So I really want a good study done on this before we make any decision. Good. Councillor Dawes, did you want it? No. All right. Th uh, thank you, Worship. Um, uh, Councillor McIsaac, I believe, brought something up that, that triggered. I brought this up, I think, at the last Committee of the Whole. Mr. Gushu will, will recall, I'm sure, uh, where our town engineer, Mr. Ernst, said that he could do a uh, one of those d d truck turn access turn models on his computer to see what just how how much of of how much let's say 10 or if it may it, it may may require 12 feet to be taken off that corner and I wasn't sure if a motion was going to be required for him to do that at the time. That wasn't, that wasn't really, that wasn't straightened out, wasn't settled. So I assume he is going to, I know you should never assume, but uh, he will be doing that model on his computer and that will tell us exactly how much he needs to take off, how much, I mean 10 feet is a lot of space. That's a lot of space and that will also help the uh, passenger vehicles make that turn as well. And yeah, if we can look at anything in the future, but right now it's, it's all dollars and cents. Let's get the most important thing done right now and then we can always, we can always look, look, look ahead into the future and look at all other studies and, and costs. Thank you. So, so there's a motion on the floor. So I live on Chestnut Street and every single day I do the Vancouver turn and two cars fit. Two cars fit and not once has that really bothered me. Because it hasn't bothered me because I think, well you gotta wait. And, and I'm in the city often and to get from one block to the other takes half an hour. So I'm willing to wait the 30 seconds extra that it takes to get into that lane to get up to my place which is always the left hand lane from Water Street. I was also with the RCMP when the when the traffic authority um, he was he was my boss he was in uh, he was in the town detachment then and I remember when the medium went in and I also remember that it changed everything because it used to be this is just my view on on what it was it was like a tangled mess down there everybody's bumping into everybody the horns are honking the I mean. It was, it was nothing short of crazy, and when the medium went in, and actually I remember he put the, the left hand, no left hand turns off of, off of Water Street signs up. Well, I, I don't know, maybe people can't read signs, but they certainly didn't follow that. So the option was, uh, as I understood it, the option was the median. And, and from my perspective, and I, and I asked Joe about this actually before I, before I came, I said, do you remember when that went in? And he remembered as well. And it just, everything just started to flow. And the fact that, now you probably have to do that too, because where you live, like you come down, I don't know what your thoughts are, but, but you're in the same position. You have to turn, get in that left lane. But it's just, um, it just made it much easier. So the only problem I see is that right turn for the trucks and they don't have enough space. So I agree that we look at that. I also agree we can look at, part, we have to look at the part of the median in the meantime, but, but Councillor Dennis, you're right. Like we can't be putting it in and taking it out. And the phone calls from people that I got that had a fear that we were gonna take the horse out, oh my goodness. 
So, you know, I, I guess studies are done and and I don't think that the population of Yarmouth has grown so much that anything should change, but but that's uh, it is what it is. So your light's been flashing. Yep. Go ahead, Councillor or uh, CAO. <laughs> <laughs> don't wish that on you, right? Thank you. Slice <laughs> 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 so a couple zeros off that paycheck. <laughs> What was I going to say? I don't know. Uh, no. So, so, so the, the motion is about is about uh, coming back with options, looking at the, the right turn for for trucks. Obviously, all aspects of the intersection will be considered, including the median. Yeah. Obviously, modeling for for turning radiuses, that kind of thing. Yes. So we don't have to tell us how to do it. We'll look exactly. at all the options. But the concrete, the other the other wrinkle that was introduced in this discussion was that concrete at the end of the uh, the bridge. I don't think that's that's real new. <coughs> Uh, that was, I don't think it's been put in since my time, but um, anyway, it's there, and I know exactly what you're talking about as far as the sight lines. Uh, not so much in my van, but in my car. And uh, I suspect it's there to protect pedestrians from falling into the gorge, or, and, but uh, we'll look at, it, at what options there might be there for that as well. Good. Okay, so the motion's on the table. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Yeah, we're going to add, everything will be looked at, yeah. So good, motion carried. Marketing and Promotions Levy Advisory Committee, Room Levy Expansion, CAO. Do you know which one that is? Because I don't know if I have anything in front of me. Yes, so uh, Council had asked for the uh, Marketing and Promotions Levy Advisory Committee to look at options for expanding the levy. And uh, you know, I know the group. Yes. I did participate in a couple of their meetings where there were there were there was discussion, but no ultimate uh, decision on on what they would recommend to council. I was not at the meeting where they made their ultimate uh, recommendation, but we did. Council was looking for it in a, in a timely manner, and so they did make come bring themselves to some consensus. And the consensus was, as you can see in the memo, is they don't believe. That, uh, that there should be any change at this time, but that perhaps it should be reviewed again in one year. So, Mr. Chancellor. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in that uh, because, again, uh, we only have a small number of, shall we say, hotels, motels in the area that are supporting the room levy, whereas we have a number of other um, institutions, shall we say, or facilities uh, that also have rooms um, that benefit a lot from what the room levy is doing is not there, but that's water under the bridge. But I, I, I do uh, am glad that they're going to be reconsidering. I would like to find out eventually uh, the rationale they use for not changing it. Um, uh, I think that would be something that would be interesting, not to drag this out tonight, but I, I would uh, ask the CAO maybe if a request could be made to Mr. Allwright, who I guess is the administrative supporter, whoever the Grand Prueba is. Um, and uh, I, I'd like to have an explanation as to the rationale uh, behind this decision. Just in, so that we would know, because it was brought to this council, our council asked for it, but basically. So I'm going to make a motion uh, that we um, request uh, an explanation or an explanation of the rationale for the decision to leave the room levy in place uh, that could be maybe uh, sent to us at some date. Second. Moved and seconded. It just says here, oh, okay, it says won't provide a substantial benefit. Okay. Councillor Doss. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, did you just read that from the correspondence that we received earlier from? I, I just have the. Uh, I just have this. Yes. Okay. All right. Because that's. Uh, I'm not. I'm not questioning. I'm not saying no. I'm not going to support it. I put my light on uh, to ask if that was possibly covered or explained in the letter, in the correspondence, and I was hurrying to find it here under correspondence, but I can't. But you have it, so, so there. Yeah. Do you want to read it? Do you want? Do you want to see it? I have here, but I was just wondering, was it was it explained in there? 
well, it just said that that it didn't it didn't uh, it wouldn't make much of a difference. Go ahead. That's, that's the room levy group. So they've been discussing it. It says they've been discussing it off and on for quite some time. Your, your light's on. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank Your Worship. Yeah, I read that, not a substantial benefit, and uh, I kind of raised my eyeballs on that one because there are a number of places in the town that have five, seven, eight, mm -hmm. you know, well under the 20 that do have rooms, and uh, uh, maybe substantial in their eyes may not be thousands of dollars, but I think, I think the point is is equalization across the board for all of the hotels in the area. I mean, I'm, I think the point is being made here is that we have some of the hotels and the motels in this community. I think we have 308 rooms in all in the town left, which is sad considering, you know, 15, 20 years ago we had 1,200 or maybe probably 20 years ago we had something like 1,200 rooms. But I think it's unfair when you look at those small, those ones that have more than 20 rooms are the ones that are paying the brunt of marketing and that are, are doing all the promoting. Yet, when I look at some of the other inns and some of the other B&Bs, some of them are charging twice what these ones that are members of the room levy group are charging. And yet they're getting the same benefit. And I think we should be equal across the board. That's all I was saying. So I'm curious as to why, in these times of equality, why the levy group is saying, no, we don't want equality. In other words, saying, no, we don't want to bring in that additional revenue. Because I'm sorry, but if you add up those other B&Bs and inns, et cetera, that are operating in this community with less than 20, I bet you're probably looking at another 500, maybe 600 room nights or in the total year. I may be wrong in that number, but I'm just throwing a number out. Well, heck, that's a few thousand dollars, and that's money that could be going to promote in Market Yarmouth, and I think that's something we want to do. So that's why I would like to get a better explanation. That's all, Your Worship. I don't know whether that helps you, Councillor Dawes. Does that answer your question? Help me. It, well, it helped me because, well, well no, because, uh, because if, there's not, if there's not a lot, but it's, it is equalization, and there are quite a number of, rooms too. There are quite a number of rooms. Yeah. CAO? Uh, thank you, Worship. So if the motion passes, then we'll pass that on to the uh, advisory committee. But I will, in addition to that, I will make sure that you're aware, that you're all aware of when their next meeting is. And it might, it might expedite the, the whole discussion if uh, if some of you were present and actually had the dialogue with them when they're when they're talking, I think you'd get a very clear idea of what they're thinking. And again, I apologize, I wasn't at the meeting where they made this ultimate decision, so I can't shed shed much light into how they came to that conclusion. But uh, a face-to-face -face would probably help answer all the questions. Yeah, it's, it's true. When you when you explained, it it helps. It does. It makes it clear. Councillor Dodge, you're on. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Mr. Gushu, because that's what I was going to, that's what I was thinking when I read this. These are the pros. They know what they're doing. Uh, they're making the recommendation. Are we, uh, uh, I trust in them, however, if we have any questions, I'm sure that they would at any time say, yeah, here, we'll explain it to you, or you're more than welcome to, uh, you're more than welcome to come in and sit in and ask your questions. So, thank you. So, that's what I was going to suggest. We we couldn't. Yeah. Okay. Let's. What was the motion? Okay. Good. Questions been called. No, we're we're voting on. We're we're just going to ask them their rationale. You very confusing. Yes, you are. But, but really, I encourage you to go to that meeting because when you explain it that way, it helps. Okay? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Municipality of Yarmouth, three parade of lights. <laughs> I know we love parade of lights. So we have a letter from, from uh, Warden Goodwin uh, and they are looking at the possibility of placing an entry in the Seafest Parade of Lights and would like to work with us in, in doing that. Councillor Dennis? 
Who has the boat? Better question. <laughs> who has the money? <laughs> I don't know who has the boat. I'll bet you there's a there's a there's lots of yeah there's lots of fishermen, lots of. Okay, so we'd be borrowing. We'd probably be borrowing okay. the boat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Big B-way will be. Any anybody that has an interest in getting into Parade of Lights, they'll be provided a, a boat and a cap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And decorations yeah, really are cool. also. Sorry, should I put my light on? So if you have a question. Okay. Oh, no, I don't have a question. I was just going to explain. Okay. Are you some information, that's all. Go ahead. Uh, boats, uh, yes. Councillor Mooney was correct. Anyone who had de a boat will be, will be provided. And uh, decorations, however you uh, or your, your, your team, uh, your boat mates want to decorate. Uh, everybody that's, that's in that team, they all just donate whatever, whatever decorations and lights that they have. It's a team effort. It's a whole boat team effort. Okay, so, so there's can I no ask money. you a question before you turn your light off? Yes. It doesn't have to cost us money? No, it does not. Okay. No, uh uh. Gas? I don't know. No, but no, uh, it does not have to cost you any money. No. Uh, I've been part of a couple of, couple, of, uh, couple of boat teams in the past. Okay, good. Thank and it you. is a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be. It is. And the fun really starts afterwards when, when you start identifying <laughs> your own lights. Who takes okay. what lights home? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Eyes. The, the Parade of Lights, is, is it, it's not put on by the town or the municipality, is it? It's, it's no, it's, it's usually, best. isn't it, doesn't Rudders put that on? Is, isn't it one of their things that they do? They sponsor it through Seafest, and we fund Seafest. We partially fund Seafest. So who do they contact, the people that want to do this? I would say they would call Seafest. The Seafest, the, sea, the, sea the new Seafest sea chairperson. Yeah. Okay, great, thank well, you. Well, the Seafest chairperson is still Don. <coughs> Whoever, yeah. yeah. Okay, Don yeah. Smith, that's who they contact. Yeah. Right, okay, thanks. Good. But that's well, correct, Martha. Martha's right here for CFAS, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Councillor Dawes? Uh, Mr. Mooney? Did you have a. Councillor Mooney? I think his light was on before. No, before it mine. wasn't because you're. They, no? they go on in order. Oh, all right. Well, if, uh, if, if, all, discussion, if all discussions are, are overdone, everyone uh, agrees, then I would make the motion to accept uh, the invitation of the warden, Murray Goodwin's invitation to uh, to collaborate with the municipality district of Yarmouth in this year's Seafest Parade of Lights event. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Oh. Did you like that one? <laughs> Did I pass? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, okay. That's good. Okay. Well, you know, it's, 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 it gets easier the more I can feel your eyes beating on me across the, <laughs> across the room. That was, that was close to perfect. Questions Aye. been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Like Motion ovation. carried. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay. What's that? Who, whoever uh, will send a note out. I'll talk to the warden and then see when they want to meet and Jeff I'll send a note out and whoever wants to go. Jeff and Jerry. Yeah, that's right. Well, I just done Jeff and Jerry. Jeff and Jerry, it's got nothing to do. <laughs> Your agenda is wide open. Oh, my <laughs> dear, help us. Yarmouth? <laughs> yeah. I've seen your office. You're not decorating anything. Okay. <laughs> Did I say that in public? <laughs> Yarmouth Facade Society request for amendment. CAO. Your Worship, this is a request from the society that is administering the facade program for the town. And what they're looking for is, I'm just bringing up the document, they're looking to, to amend the eligibility. And so the facade society, that the facade facility applied to the town of Yarmouth for an amendment to the memorandum of understanding to allow for inclusion of any portion of the building that is predominantly visible from Main Street. And so they're, they're 
talking about facades of, of corner of corner buildings, and they've listed a few examples here, the shop, city drug, etc., that have a significant sidewall facades. And so this would not affect the maximum eligible funding of those properties, but would allow them to use some of the uh, mon money that they could access through the town to do a second uh, predominantly visible uh, facade of the building uh, that they have. So they're asking that they be allowed to do that. And that's for your consideration. Okay, so I, I completely support this. Have you seen the wool shop? It's beautiful. It looks it's beautiful. awesome. It's so clean and bright. It just lifts the whole corner. And you can't just paint the facade when you're on a corner like that. You really can't. You could. <laughs> okay. Okay, moved and seconded. Oh, Councillor, questions been called? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Okay, that one's out. Council advisory committees, committee of the whole, deputy mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, from the motion from the Committee of Whole, April 23rd, 2015. Um, this is the first of 99, no, no, this is number one. <laughs> I move that Faye Allen be appointed a member of the Communities in Bloom Committee. Right. Moved and seconded, discussion? Question. Questions Question. being called, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary, motion carried. Okay, uh, we have Citizen Advisory Committee, Planning Advisory, Deputy. Um, from a public hearing of earlier uh, this evening, I move to amend the land use bylaw to remove the split zoning of 79 Main Street from low density residential and secondary commercial to secondary commercial as outlined in Caroline's report. Second. Moved and seconded, Second. discussion? Questions being called, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary, motion carried. And we have, okay, so the next one there, deputy, is, um, I have a recommendation from the public hearing January 8th. January 8th, yes. Go ahead, CAO. Thank you, Worship. So um, you'll recall that this one dealt with the rezoning of a property on Herbert Street that we had acquired and had an agreement with the previous owner that he had a buyback clause and that buyback clause expired on April 1st. So we've already done uh, the, the, um, the first reading and we did the public hearing in January, but the, the previous owner reminded us that there were still a few months left on that agreement for which he could redeem the property and he wished it not to be rezoned or changed until that agreement had expired. The agreement is now expired and so we're bringing it back to the table for your consideration. It, it expired as of April 1st. So um, yep. I move to amend the land use bylaw to rezone numbers two and six Herbert Street from low, des low density residential R1 to open space Zero 01, as outlined in Caroline's report. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Aye. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. Heritage Advisory Committee, not 90 Water. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, we had a public e meeting, public hearing earlier this evening with regard to 90 Water Street, uh, where we invited the public to make submissions with regard to the designation of 90 Water Street as a municipal heritage building. Uh, subsequently, I'd like to make a motion upon recommendation of the Heritage Advisory Committee that 90 Water Street be designated as a municipal heritage building. So moved. Second. And seconded. Any discussion? <coughs> Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Contrary? Motion carried. Reports for information. I, I have a question. That's not very many motions. 
from committees as a whole. Three committee of the whole meeting. Did you notice that? They were, weren't they? That's exactly it. It was, it was mostly budget. Okay. All right, and we have, okay. Communities in bloom, counselor. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we had a, a meeting of the Communities in Bloom Committee yesterday, and I apologize to Council. We were kind of close for the same reason because of UNSM. Uh, three items came up uh, for Council to consider. Uh, first of all, um, Council, uh, we did give a notice to Council that we were involved with the Blue Dot um, initiative by David Suzuki. Um, and uh, as a result, the Communities in Bloom Committee uh, at its meeting is making a recommendation to Yarmouth Town Council to accept the, um, the document that we have brought before you. I still circulated today. Uh, if council wants to take time to consider it or move it to another meeting, that's fine too. But it's um, this model that we're using is uh, the model that was used by the city of Dundas and uh, is that what they were using. Uh, so far, there are 28 municipalities across Canada that have endorsed this. Uh, we would be probably the first in Atlantic Canada, I believe. Um, basically, um, the resolution that I would like to move that the Yarmouth Town Council endorse the following resolution and authorize our mayor to sign this declaration on behalf of council. The declaration simply that we're simply stating, be it resolved that the town of Yarmouth endorses the following declaration that all people have the right to live in a healthy environment, including the right to breathe clean air, the right to drink clean water, the right to consume safe food, the right to assess, access nature, the right to know about pollutants and contaminants released into the local environment, and the right to participate in decision making that will affect the environment. Further, that the town of Yarmouth has the responsibility within its jurisdiction to respect, protect, and fulfill and promote these rights. Thirdly, the town of Yarmouth shall apply the pre precautionary principle whereas threats of serious or irreversible damage to human health or environment exist, the town shall take cost-effective measures to prevent the degradation of the environment and protect the health of its citizens. Further, the town will consider the cost of human health and environment when the town of Yarmouth is evaluating reasonably foreseeable costs of proposed actions and alternatives, the town will consider cost to human health and environment. And finally, the town shall review the objectives, uh, targets, timelines, and actions in its integrated community sustainability plan and evaluate progress towards fulfilling this declaration. If I have a seconder. Second. Thank you, Councillor Mooney. We're doing pretty well all of this now, uh, and I think CIO can pretty well comment. We have a very good I ICSP, the, uh, so it's, it's more or less reaffirming, and it's kind of nice that we do have this uh, this work that our former planner did and staff have done on the integrated community sustainability plan. So it kind of goes hand in hand with that. So there's no financial commitment, there's no financial concerns. It's basically just putting a little extra support to what we've already done in our IS, ICSP. So that's the recommendation of our, of our committee. Good, Councillor McIsaac. Thank you. you uh, uh, Deputy Mayor had his light on first. It, it was. It's been on. Oh, for thank a while. you. Uh, I, I'm I'm supportive of this, but I just got one question to Jeff. As our solicitor looked at this uh, document, and if he hasn't, should he? I'm not aware that he has. I I assume he reviews the items that are on the council agenda prior to the meeting. But as as you know, he wasn't able to be with us this evening, so. Um, I can't say for certain that he has. It certainly hasn't communicated anything back to me to that effect. He hasn't communicated anything? He has, he has not communicated be, anything. Has he looked at the document? I, I can't say for certain. So maybe perhaps he, that's why he didn't communicate back, maybe. Yeah. Uh, would you think it would be fair for him to look at this document at, at first? I mean, it, it's, I, I think we're all in agreement, but we have to do our due diligence, exactly. you know, around this table. So uh, I'd be more comfortable if he looked at this and if there's, I'm sure it's, everything's good, but uh, we, we should do our due diligence, so. That's the only concern I have. Your Worship, if I may, if the, if the seconder is an agreement, and, and I agree with Councillor McKay's because this is coming up and there may be something in there uh -huh. that we're not dotting our I's or crossing our T's. So I think, uh -huh. Your Worship, if uh, Councillor Mooney will agree, if I could add at the beginning of my motion that I'm making a, a notice of motion that at our next council meeting I will move. 
Okay, so just we'll make this a notice of motion, and idea. therefore it's not debatable. We can just move it, let the solicitor, and then we can yeah. let him look at it, come back to us, and then we'll make it as a notice of motion. I think that would be the best way of handling this. Good. Okay, so we're good. Councillor Dodge, you're on. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, good move, good, uh, good decision, Councillor Langell. Um, I support this as well, but uh, number three, I, have do, I do have some questions about number three, and I'm sure that the solicitor can answer, answer those once, uh, once he's had a chance to, uh, to peruse this and, and uh, advise us. Good. Okay. So, so we're good. So you're on to the second one. I did hit your button. Uh, somebody else is on? Yep. Oh, cool. Thank you, Mayor Mood. Um, the, uh, your Worship. Um, the second motion is probably going to fit in the same category because, in fairness, we just got our report. You were circulated um, a report from Rodney Doucette with our Public Works Department with regard to the um, work that our committee has been working on with the Milton Park. Um, at our meeting yesterday, we were shown the plan of Milton Park, and I had hoped that Council would have had a look at this. So I'm simply going to make this a notice of motion as well. Um, and my simply to advise council that at the June meeting of council, I will be making a motion upon recommendation of the communities in Bloom uh, that the that the town of Yarmouth receive the recommendations from the subcommittee on the new Doug Melanson Park, with the understanding that it's been referred to the Parks Department and approval from Milton Improvement Society. So what, what did you just did you just say you're doing a notice? Of a motion? notice of motion. That way we can get uh, Mayor Mood. Uh, we'll be able to get the plans to council so they can see that plan and we'll make sure that you'll have the details because in, in fairness it's kind of like almost a pig and a poke here tonight without you guys having the information you need. Excellent. Do you need a seconder? You're just going to move that? Okay. And the third one? The third one? Okay. <laughs> this we can do. Um, there was discussion at the Communities in Bloom and we, the motion that we're recommending that the Communities in Bloom Committee it recommends that Council send letters to Tri-County Restorative Justice, the Community Deterrence Program and Probation Servicing Services welcoming community service workers to assist in keeping the town clean. And if there's a second at all. The, some of the committee members brought up yesterday to assist with town staff. We do have a number of community service orders that are issued by the courts, and it might be nice if maybe some of these individuals may be attached to the town somehow to assist. And I know Councillor Mooney and Councillor Dennis are members of the committee. They may want to chime in, but it's pretty well just a request to them to see if they would consider assigning some to our staff. Good. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Questions been called? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And that, and that was brought uh, forward by Dave Sollers, who's an educator and has worked with uh, worked within the system, and along with some help from the chair of the communities in Bloom. I think uh, it's a question that's posed to you almost uh, every month about uh, about youth or anybody else doing damage to public property, especially we had the damage here last year with the garbage cans and the receptacles that were smashed and obliterated, um, how we can make citizens more accountable. And I think this might be a step if we can just give a little nudge to the people that are in positions of making these decisions to maybe uh, help, help them get on a little better, straighter path. Good. Okay. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. I've got additions. I got a mayor's report and it's very short because we covered most of it. And Tina, it'll be a little bit longer for you when you when you get it. But as I read this, the Nova Star is about 50 miles offshore and will dock here tomorrow at 9 a.m. That's Friday morning. We all share in the excitement of another tourist season. And while the docking of the ship should serve as a reminder of the hard fought battle to see the service returned and the damage done in the four years without the service, that in turn should cause each and every one of us to step up any way we can to ensure our visitors know just how important they and the service is to us in Yarmouth and to the entire province. The fight isn't over. There's been much heated discussion over the past year with regard to the ship and as the provincial government is committed to both the service and to watching this year closely with a plan in mind, it's important that we continue to put our best foot forward this season. 
and our best foot is certainly showing up on Main Street. A drive from Yarmouth South through the downtown reveals a great deal of work being done. The facade program's in full swing with a number of businesses making improvements. The half million dollars given by the federal government for our downtown revitalization will be put to good use very soon as the streetscape through bump outs and more will start to evolve. Hawthorne Street improvements are ongoing and should be completed over the next couple months. And if you head to the farmer's market on Saturday mornings, you'll have a first-hand view of all the work being done there. Potholes are a huge concern here, just as they are in most municipalities throughout the entire country. It was an extremely rough winter for the roads. The crews are, crews are hard at work filling the potholes as quickly and as, as efficiently as they can. And I might add that they are not starting at one end and going to the other. Instead, they're covering roads in all areas of town as they come by the, uh, the areas of biggest concern. It's important that we're patient as there's much to be done and more so that we're thankful for the, all the hours the teams are putting in. At least the snow's gone for a few months. Some may have noticed the lake level is quite low at, at Milo. The anticipation of higher rainfalls, which didn't materialize, uh, meant that the dam was lowered. What is important to note is that it's Gasparo season, and we understand that, and the town will be pumping water down the fish ladder to facilitate climbing as the tide rises, ensuring the fish can follow the natural process and finding their place to spawn. So that, that will take, it's actually taking place now. Teams with the All Hands on Deck initiative have been quietly making plans over the winter months, and within the next month you'll see activity from a number of these teams. If you're looking to help with painting, murals, flower gardens, and more, don't, con don't hesitate to contact me. And actually, what happens with some of these teams is um, Councillor Dennis has a group that, that some of these people go to. Uh, Councillor Langell has the Communities in Bloom that a lot of people uh, end up taking part in, in various activities. This community always steps up in a big way when there's work to be done, and thanks to all of you, we won't lose our momentum. I also want to mention that uh, May 17th to 23rd has been declared VON Week, and thank you, Councillor Dawes, for bringing that to my attention. Uh, Councillor Dawes and I were just at uh, Beacon Church this evening, where Suzanne Dontremont um, was actually celebrated for 30 years work with the VON, so it was it was a really great evening. So we celebrate and, and thank the VON certainly for their work in the community. Finally this evening, the budget was passed. Uh, all the information I think the CAO went, went over, uh, except for also within the, the budget, we are funding a new bus service that will start in the fall. We're funding the Main Street Facade Program, have new grants for heritage properties. The street lights have been converted to LED, which converts to a saving in excess of 75,000 a year. As well, uh, our Harbor South Medical Clinic is fully staffed, which reduces the town's cost. Having the high school pass to us uh, will cost us an extra 125000 per year to maintain, but we are certainly in the process of finding appropriate uses for that building. That's ongoing. We also signed new intermunicipal agreements, which change the, changes the joint funding agreements, which is good for all partners. And, and with regard to the budget, I can say this bluntly, there's not a lot of wiggle room in this year's budget. I think everyone at this uh, table understands it. But, but I guess the upside to this is that we always continue to look diligently at everything that comes across our desk, and sometimes we have to say no. But we, we consider everything, uh, understanding that everything costs money, and there are a lot of things to take into consideration. We're looking forward to a great summer with the ship and the visitors and lots of work. We're all thankful that the snow is gone, the sun is shining, and of course we wouldn't want to be anywhere else but Yarmouth on the edge of everywhere. Short and sweet. Longer for you, Tina. Go ahead, CAO. Your Worship, just I, I want to just clarify one, one small point, yep. and that is around Hawthorne Street. Yes. That project should be complete within the next two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks. Oh, well, that's yeah. amazing, because yeah. we were looking at three months. Yeah, so they're doing they're doing great work, and I was on site uh, just today, and the, uh, uh, the the foreman on the site uh, confirmed that two weeks is the timeline. So that is excellent, excellent. Councillor Dennis is going to ask a question. Go ahead. Can we just, for the public's sake, uh, exactly say exactly what was done on Hawthorne Street? <coughs> Yeah, the um, below the surface uh, water line was replaced, uh, sewer line was replaced. Uh, we're going to be doing a, um, 
the storm water on, on the street is going to be handled in a, in a, a progressive way with rain gardens and, and other, uh, other methods, other, let's say, non-traditional methods of dealing with storm water. The street uh, is being defined with, uh, with curbing on both sides and all of the driveways are being defined uh, thusly. There will be sidewalks uh, on both sides of the, of the street and there will be a, uh, a, a uh, I guess I would say, a cobblestone uh, pedestrian area immediately in front of the farmer's market. So for, for pedestrians and people uh, looking to congregate uh, on the street uh, when the farmer's market is open, I think that'll be a nice amenity. Uh, believe there will be trees and perhaps some street furniture as well. So it, it, when it's done, uh, the street will be better defined. It is not a wide street, so it'll be a slow traffic street. And they've actually added uh, a little bit of uh, curvature to the street, uh, so it won't be just a straight shot down Hawthorne, but it'll actually be a couple of gentle, gentle curves in it. <coughs> Good. Okay, questions for committee chairs, anyone? Excuse me, Councillor Mooney. Yeah, and, and we have the boat coming in, and I hope everybody goes down to see it tomorrow. But um, I just want people to go down and look at Scotia Garden and the job that they've done in front of that facility. You would not believe it's a, a fish plant, but I think we need some of that tender, loving care at the terminal, too, because it's yeah. not, you can see what Tim can do. Um, I think we need some painting. I'm talking about crosswalks in front of the terminal. I noticed they're, they're in desperate shape for yeah, crosswalks. And, and I think, I don't know if we're going to do that or if we bring that up again on Tuesday night with the uh, Yarmouth Area Industrial Commission. But I think this is a project that's a little bigger than all hands on deck. This has to be something that's, that's uh, municipally driven because we have to take pride in that facility. And uh, we are the first point of entry. But I, I encourage everybody around the table and anybody in the audience just to drive down Water Street and look at Scotia Garden. Mr. Kaiser and his crew have done a fantastic job. Yeah. Hmm? Certainly. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I wanted to comment on that because I, I had the opportunity a couple months ago to, to meet with Mr. Kaiser and I, I commended him on the, on the work that, that his employees do every year. On, on the property on the front and he explained it to me and he said, you know, we're, we're in the food processing business and it, we take a lot of pride in, in our cleanliness and, and how, we, how we handle people's food. And, and he said, we think that how our building presents on the street is a reflection of how we care when we do our work and so that, that's part of, their, part of their brand and part of their message to the community is how they look after their property and I think it's, it, it, it's well noticed. Yeah. Councillor Dennis? I just have a question on who's responsible for the flag at the terminal. Uh, if it's on the property, then it would be uh, the, the, the lessee or less or be no, <laughs> Nova Star. Okay. It's just because the flag that's flying there looks pretty terrible. Okay. And okay. we have the ship coming in tomorrow. And plus, also, it's been brought to my attention about the flag here in front of um, the cenotaph that it's the Canadian flag is just hanging there by one end, which looks terrible. Ooh, okay. So, if we could get those fixed up, maybe. Sure. Can we do? We have to do that ferry terminal before tomorrow. Well, they're just coming to pick up that, but they'll be here for a week. Okay. Additions, fire department, tender, pump or rescue. All those in favor? <laughs> right, Chief? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's okay. Take your time. Get, get that done, and then we're, we're just on Sorry. the... Uh, no, you can only do yeah. one thing at once. Yeah, and I was doing the wrong one. So you're looking at the, uh, the fire truck tender yes. recommendation. Okay. So as, uh, as council is aware, we did an RFP process to replace two vehicles with one, a, a pumper rescue, and uh, the chief has reviewed the, uh, the two proposals that were received, and he's recommending that council reject both bids submitted and approve a new tendering for the purchase of a pumper rescue. 
And uh, we, I support that recommendation. I believe we can get uh, uh, more competitive bids and better value for money, uh, or clearly more value for money uh, through redoing the process. So that is for your consideration. Good. Yes, motion. Motion to reject. Well, can we, are we allowed to do that? Yes. Negative motion? No, it's not a negative motion. We're rejecting. Okay. Good? Yes, exactly. Okay, so moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, contrary? Motion carried. Uh, Glebe Street? Councillor Dennis? I was just wondering about the uh, Glebe Street report. Um, when, uh, if we could get a copy of that report. Okay, thanks. Good. WDC, Derek Robertson. I think that was you, Deputy. Go ahead. Earlier in the evening, I asked uh, for consideration for a young man by the name of Derek Robertson to be appointed to the uh, Waterfront Development Corporation. Uh, Derek was uh, on the list of uh, people who submitted uh, participation on this committee, and uh, we didn't at that time appoint him. I'm asking for your support in asking a, a young man, Derek Robertson, to be part of the Waterfront Development Corporation. So, mo so moved. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Go ahead. Just, uh, just a question. I don't have my notes. I'm born of the CEO. Number one, the way the Waterfront Development Corporation works, I believe, is seats are assigned to different sectors. Are we still doing that? And if so, where would Mr. Robertson fit? And secondly, do we have seats available on the Waterfront Development Corporation? I vaguely remember I thought our, the designated seats were filled, but I'm not. I just... It was my question before I, I'm very supportive of the motion and uh, definitely respect the deputy mayors, but I would want to make sure that we do have space and number two, if he fits within the criteria of the, and I, I don't know, maybe, I don't want to Sorry. bog this down, but. No I, didn't no, I would have to review that. I would have to review that. I can't tell you for certain. I believe there are seats available, but as far as the designation within the bylaws, I, I can't speak to that. Okay. May I suggest to the motion uh, so that we can expedite it, that maybe with the, with the understanding that there is seats available and that Mr. Is it Mr. Robertson, I believe he said, Jim, and what, that Mr. Robertson fits the criteria of, of the Waterfront Development Corporation. Is that agreeable? Yeah, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I second it. Okay. Good. Okay. Question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Councillor Dawes? Congrats and acknowledgement. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, no motion here. I just uh, wanted to share an observation and also I wanted to comment on something that I believe is very important. Um, oh, are you okay? I thought you were... Okay. Uh, I know I, as a counselor... <laughs> this is choking him up. Hope he's all right. Ha, ah, I know I, and you're cracking up. <laughs> what is so funny? We don't know what the motion, we don't know what the. There, there is no motion. <laughs> yes, I can, I can feel your gentle gaze right across the room. Uh, now, I know I, as a counselor, I feel proud that we're making progress towards Yarmouth's business <laughs> renaissance, and there are signs all over the place, everywhere there are new businesses opening new facade program that started, that's exciting, and of course the boat's returning. But I'd like to point out that Yarmouth was built uh, by small businesses, and it con continues to grow through small business men. In fact, um, all across Canada, the small business is the financial backbone, the economic backbone of not only the country, but our town. And one uh, business person in particular uh, he's just recently celebrated his 25th year here in, 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 uh, in business in town, and that's Roland Fitzgerald. Oh, wow. There is a man um, on, on, uh, on Pleasant Street. He was there for many years, and uh, he's back again now. He has top-line sales. But uh, in aggregate, he just put a, a full 25 years 
of, uh, of business under his belt here in town. Uh, he's built a successful business. He's provided jobs here for over the last 25 years. And he has always, um, always had a sign out front in support and recognizing. Uh, you always knew what was going on in town because he, he always had a, a little sign of, of recognition for, for local events going on. Uh, so that is why I brought this up. I just wanted to acknowledge that and to congratulate him for 25 solid successful years in business here in town on Pleasant Street. Thank you. Sure. Your Worship, thank, thank you very you. much. Congratulations. Yeah, that's great. We're going to put Jim in with the Canada's 150th. <laughs> no, we're not, Jim. You're a young whippersnipper. How's Canada like the poor confederation, Jim? <laughs> Approval of invoices. Oh, second. Date of next meeting, June the 11th. And a motion to adjourn. So moved. There's no in camera, so... We're good to go.